Hi, this is Arthur from ttmministry.com. Today I'm going to share a message about it's being fat a sin. It's being fat a sin, it's being obese a sin, it's being gluten a sin. What is the definition of a gluten? A person who eats or drinks excessive. What is excessive? Excessive means eating and drinking more than necessary or what our body needs. Just putting this in different wording so everyone can understand it clearly. A person who is not able to control themselves, or in other words, are addicted, can't live without. An easy way to test if you are addicted to food is try to fast on water alone for at least seven days. Very biblical, fasting. If you are having cravings and uncontrollable passion for food or sugar, that means you are addicted. The body doesn't need food that much. It can easily survive without food for 40 days. According to CDC, obesity is now the number one health threat facing Americans. A new study recently published by Purdue University professor Ken Ferraro examined the relationships between religion and BMI and obesity. The study found, isn't that funny, the study found that church members tend to be more overweight than the general population. So people who go to church seem to be more obese than the general people that's not going to church. The Bible condemns overindulgence in many things, including food. Proverbs 23, verse 22, 21 says, Do not mix with wine bibbers or with glutinous eaters of meat, for the drunkard and the gluten will come to poverty, and drowsiness will clothe a man with rags. The church is generally quick to point to the numerous instances in Scripture where our bodies are described as a temple. Those passages are convenient when we want to address illegal drugs or smoking or gambling and alcohol abuse, but rarely, if ever, do we address the sin of overeating because of lack of self-control. See, the church often talks about drugs and smoking and gambling, that that is wrong. But I've never remember ever hearing anything of this about the sin of overeating. That eating too much is not good. It's considered a sin. When used properly, food should satisfy our body's needs. The problem is when we overindulge with no sensitivity to hunger. That is excessive eating. It's eating too much. When we look to food to comfort us, soothe our emotions, solve our problems, or make us happy, we are placing food before God. Using food to satisfy our spiritual needs is a sin. When food is becoming more important than God becomes, it means that food has become the idol. Do you not know that your body is a sanctuary of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God? You are not your own. 1 Corinthians 6.19 Obesity rates are rising rapidly, so do rates of diseases associated with obesity. There are more obese U.S. adults than those who are just overweight. According to a study in the Journal of the American Medical Association, in 2008, the obesity rate among adult Americans was estimated at 32.2% for men and 35.5% for women. These rates were roughly confirmed by the CDC again for 2009-2010. This means that one-third of the population in America is considered overweight, is considered obese. Overweight is even lesser than obese. That is shocking. One third of the population is considered obese. In a press release by the CDC, Director Jeffrey P. Copeland said, overweight and physical inactivity account for more than 300,000 300,000 premature deaths each year in the U.S. This is second, it's just after second only to tobacco-related deaths. Obesity is an epidemic, listen, epidemic, and should be taken as seriously 
as any infectious disease epidemic. Obesity and overweight are linked to the nation's number one killer, heart disease, as well as diabetes and other chronic conditions. According to Galatians 6, 7, the Bible says, Do not be deceived. God is not mocked for whatever a man sows that he will also reap. You see, if we put wrong food in our body, it automatically means it's going to have consequences. If we put good food in our body, it also means that the body can keep running. If we keep giving a bad fuel, the car is going to stop. If you keep it running and maintaining it well, the car will go on for years and years and be a real blessing. It's the same for our bodies. Whatever you sow, you will reap. Overweight and obese people are at increased risk for developing conditions like heart disease, diabetes, stroke, hypertension, arthritis, sleep, sleep apnea, asthma and other breathing problems, cancer, there's an increase of cancer lately, and even death. For you will board at a price, therefore glorify God in your body. 1 Corinthians 6.20 not only is obesity poor stewardship of the body, it's also poor financial stewardship. The estimated annual cost associated with overweight and obesity in the US, US are just under 123 billion. That's just amazing. 123 billion dollars. That's that's just an astonishing amount. That's what the estimate cost annual cost of people being overweight and obese in the U.S. Over in, overeating indicates walking in the flesh rather than the spirit. Scripture says, Galatians 5, 23 Fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faith, gentleness, and self-control. Against such there is no law. A disciplined life honors God. We have an example of that in Daniel. Daniel is a great example of a person who demonstrated discipline when it came to eating. King Nebuchadnezzar brought Daniel and several other young men to him. The king assigned them daily provisions from the royal food and from the wine that he drank. However, Daniel said, no, no, no. He determined that he would not devile himself to king's food or with the wine he drank. Daniel requested the king to test him for those who are eating the king's food. So he said, I prefer you giving me uh, water and vegetables. And at the end of 10 days, they look better and healthy than all the young men who were eating the king's food. Wow, it's just in 10 days. So the God continued to give them vegetables. God gave these four young men eventually knowledge and understanding in every kind of literature and wisdom. Then he also understood visions and dreams of every kind. Daniel and his friends showed the wisdom of eating properly by including fresh vegetables in their diet instead of overindulging on a king's rich foods. They also demonstrated that by placing the correct emphasis on food as a tool to nourish our physical bodies instead of yielding to our lust for food, we are healthier and better able to follow God's call. So is gluttony or overeating a sin? Gluten means to eat too much, excessive. So gorging on food could indeed be considered sinful. But a state of being overweight might not be due to overeating. So it would be misleading and unkind to declare the sin to be overweight. If I had to summarize it, overeating is considered a sin and can lead us to become overweight. But being overweight is not in and of, in and of itself a sin. Quoting Gary Thomas, So I go to war against gluttony and indulge not because I want God to love me more, but because God, who already loves me perfectly, warns me that gluttony and excess are my enemies. You see, being disciplined with eating our food has nothing to do with getting God's favor. It just means that we will feel better and we'll be able to serve God better. Regardless of how good they may sometimes feel, I go to war against gluttony not to build a body that others admire, but to maintain a soul 
prepared for every good work that God can use to bless others. I go to war against scrutiny because those who have walked closely with God from the early 4th century all the way through the 19th warn me that overeating dulls me to God's accepting presence, makes me more vulnerable to other sins, negatively affects my relationship with other people, and robs me of the joy rightfully mine as an adopted, deeply loved, and accepted child of God. Just ask yourself, is eating too much having an influence on your relationship with God? Ask yourself, gaining weight, is that having an influence on your relationship with God? Just be honest. And if it does, ask God to forgive you and ask Him to give you grace to be able to get back on the right feet again. I just hope that this was helpful. And for comments, questions, or suggestions, please contact me. I would love to hear from you. Until next time, God bless. This was Arthur from TTMinistry.com.